are amazing. I've spoken in so many places, but when I arrived here, the heart, you aren't kidding, the heart here is incredible. All of you are so open, genuinely open, authentically open. It is, um, it's a virtual miracle of sorts, or reality. And Carol, thank you so much, and there you are. And for getting us all breathing again, that was great. I can't wait till tomorrow's Latin fusion or whatever we're going to do tomorrow. It's wonderful. How are you guys tonight? Good. I want you to talk back to me. I don't want to be up here talking to you for an hour and a half because we need to create an interactive field, right? The universe works in a dialogue, not a monologue. So I want you to not wait. Raise your hands if you have questions. Let's be really interactive. I have a lot of information to share with you. wish I had a whiteboard to scribble on, but I'll do it with my hands instead. And um, let's, let's really look at some things that maybe you haven't thought about before and figure out how to first identify what those virtual viruses are, second, really embrace what you're capable of, and then discover what you came to do. Because it really is, this whole conference is about heart, and there are uh, different kinds of heart, if you will. We've got the, the physical heart, right? And then we have the emotional heart. But we really have a heart of soul, which embraces our passion. And that's what we want to get to. When we can get to that, we can unlock anything. So when you um, when you hear what I've been doing and all that, it sounds it sounds a little bit like a miracle. But life wasn't always that way. I um, I have an interesting background. I was I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself before we get started, so you don't think it's just been it's been an easy walk. Um, I was born. My dad was largely Native American. My mother was Swiss German. Dad was undercover in the Cold War, had a toothache, and went to the dentist. He fell in love with the dental assistant, <laughs> dated her for two years under a cover name, Johan Kowalski, and she, the day they were married, um, she found out that he was not the 40-year-old German lawyer he was pretending to be, that he was a 30-year-old American counterintelligence agent. <laughs> well, she married him anyway. I'm not sure she ever forgave him, but she married him. And uh, then he went to Vietnam, and we were basically staying uh, by ourselves in Europe. I grew up speaking German and French and Swiss and Italian, and Dad was gone almost uh, most of my upbringing. I didn't really meet him until about two years prior to his death, at which time I helped him write books. And uh, he wrote four books with me that chronicled his adventures as a spy. And uh, I infused that into my new mainstream novel. So, so that's that, that part. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I was able to perceive energy. Now, most of you here, I find it remarkable, you're all very evolved, and you're very sensitive. Uh, that's not an unusual thing to say here, but try saying that in Texas, and they want to know if you're seeing oil or gas. Okay. Um, really, I saw it just subtle fields, and, and much like any skill, it evolved over time. So initially, you know, I may see color around me and know who was going to call Friday at 2 o'clock. But over the course of a very short period of time, it became quite specific. I would see things that looked like patterns and uh, mathematical formulas. And if you focused in on a particular blob of energy, you would have a hologram appear in your mind with information. I didn't know what to do with any of these abilities. And what troubled me most greatly was that I was keenly aware of the destructive influences in which we were living. Uh, like I said, I grew up during the Vietnam War era. The things that they were showing on TV for the very first time in history, they were showing soldiers being carted off, bloody soldiers. People were shutting down left and right. Uh, Germany, where I grew up, still had a lot of uh, buildings that were bombed out. It was just people were breaking. And I was seeing the fracturing. And I came in with this uh, very acute awareness of what love was supposed to feel like, of what partnership was supposed to feel like. I had a very thin veil, as you might say, and I didn't see any evidence of that here on Earth. And I became really um, discouraged. It didn't feel like home. How many of you had that growing up, that sense of, yeah, it's, it's, it's not all that uncommon to feel like you don't really fit in. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a much kinder and more loving place down here, and we start to shield our heart. Well, my first near-death experience was at 7, and I uh, was swimming away from the diving board. Somebody jumped right square in the middle of my back. I went to the bottom of the pool, 
and the lifeguard didn't see me. And while it sounds pretty awful, it was really quite wonderful, I started floating up through the clouds. And the higher I went through the clouds, the more I remembered what that love felt like, that one that I came in knowing was supposed to be here. And I felt as though I was arriving in a very safe place. Well, what was interesting about that was it created a knowing within me that there was no need to fear death. So I embraced it. I embraced and remembered that that love was real. And I was rather disappointed to find myself having CPR on the side of the pool, uh, feeling my head against the concrete. So I sat there from 7 to about 9 or 10 thinking, OK, so that love is real. I just don't see any evidence of it. What do I do down here? Because my heart, it was very hard, the heart. You're going to find by the end of this presentation, you guys are right on the money. I want to walk around up here, but I'm afraid to fall off the corners. I'm just going to stand still. <laughs> I don't want to walk in front of this too much either, so bear with me. Thank you. That felt great. I'm at, I'm at peace here. Um, the heart is really the key to everything, but it's a bigger heart than you might imagine. It's much bigger than you might imagine. One of the main reasons for the timing is that you know that you can get a DVD. The tape is only going so long. So we, you can get the DVD and you can take a look at this and watch it again and again. The poem that I had, uh -huh. Willingness knows that there is no time to delay. Everything has to be done at once, happily and self givingly. I think that sums up what you heard today. Let's give another big round of